If you have your Bible this morning, I want you to take your Bible and turn to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. And I want us to stand together and we will begin reading at verse number 51. Acts chapter 7, verse number 51. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge and when he had said this he fell asleep with God's help this morning I want to preach to you a message by this title when the sermon went south this sermon went south and I'm praying that this one won't (laughs) brother Peeler glad to see y'all Would you please pray for me, and then everybody can be seated. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, for the church. We thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. We pray for the message to be given. We pray, God, that the words that we're about to break the bread of life, that there's someone here this morning that's not saved, that the words... Through, the, through your word, God, yes. that you would convict the heart that they would come to know Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for Brother Dennis. We pray for his wife as she visits that precious grandchild. Father, we pray for all the seniors. Now, God, as we break, break the bread of life, we ask you to be with the message, be with the man, and be with the church. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. My message this morning is designed to give warning and to give spiritual insight into how people receive Bible preaching and the day and time in which we live. Now, this message that we are going to go over this morning may have been given 2,000 years ago, but the same reaction is often given when a message of this nature is preached today. And I want to encourage you to go home today and read the entire chapter and you will get then the ebb and flow of the sermon and maybe understand why it was so upsetting to those who were present. First of all, I want you to notice that a man by the name of Stephen is doing the preaching. Stephen is one of the first deacons chosen in the local church that began in Jerusalem. The Bible describes Stephen as a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost and full of power. Stephen was a good man. The Bible also tells us that some folks fell out with Stephen. 
while he was disputing with them about the things of God. And what happened is these men bribed other men to lie about Stephen and falsely accuse him of blaspheming the temple and the law of God. The, then the Bible tells us that the elders and the scribes go and fetch Stephen and they give him an opportunity to clear his name. And then this sermon begins. Now listen to me. This sermon runs about 52 verses. And the thing that I want you to understand here this morning is for about 49 of those verses, they all listen intently and nobody says or does anything. But then the sermon goes south. They are so angered, listen to me this morning, they are so angered and upset after just three verses worth of material that they stone Stephen to death. What in the world? Did Stephen preach to get that kind of reaction? <laughs> well, before we look at what ruined the sermon for everybody, I think we first of all this morning need to take a look at what did not bother them. Listen to me. A great majority of this sermon did not upset them or anger them at all. For an example, when you go back and you look at this sermon, they were willing to listen to a history lesson. You know, teaching... Teaching usually doesn't upset anybody. Well, I'll amen myself. Teaching usually doesn't upset anybody. It's preaching. And they were willing to listen to a good history lesson when you go through there. He's talking about Isaac, how he, how he, well, he begins with Abraham. And then he goes through Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. He jumps over to Moses in his sermon and Solomon. And he expounds the history of the Jews. And so they all stand there and they listen intently. They were willing to listen to some theology when you go about verses 44 through 46. Uh, Stephen in those passages, in those verses, spoke of the tabernacle. The word Jesus is used there instead of Joshua in verse number 45 because Joshua is a type of Jesus Christ. So listen, these folks did not get upset when a history lesson was being given because people like teaching. These people did not get upset when a little theology was given because after all, that stimulates the mind and we like to learn something. i tell you something else. These people enjoyed hearing about Israel being the underdog, verses 18 to 19. And also in the same verses, these people enjoyed hearing about Egypt being the dog. See, when you talk about us as Israel being the underdog and God taking care of us, yes, we will listen intently to that. And then when we talk about those bad Egyptians, well, amen you and listen intently to that. The message, listen to me this morning now, the message was going real good, real good. Everybody was fine with it. When Stephen was speaking about God helping Israel and God bringing them out of Egyptian bondage, everybody was like, amen, amen, preach that again, amen. Well... They, listen, they were not even bothered by the negative preaching about others. Listen, when he starts in there about verse number 39 and goes on up until verse number 51, that word our father shows up several times in there. And listen, they didn't even get offended even though they were talking about he was preaching against his own people, their people, the Jews at that time. They were not offended because they were preaching against our fathers, the ones before us. He wasn't talking to me. And then, verse number 51 takes a drastic change. I mean, it went south in a hurry. Sort of like this thing right now is doing. So I want to ask you a question this morning. Everybody listen to me and look up at me if you would, please. What made this sermon so distasteful and so unappealing that it cost Stephen his life? Well, I want to give you three things. And it is the same three things that will put a burr up under your saddle today. You see, this message might have been preached some 2,000 years ago. But 
people haven't changed that much. <laughs> they will still endure some teaching. They like a good little theology lesson or a good history lesson or some good information or some stuff. Well, I didn't know that. I sure learned me a pastle full of Bible tonight. Isn't he a sweet little Bible teacher? And they'll put up with all that stuff. And even when you start talking about somebody else, they'll say, amen, preacher, that's right. Those, those people out yonder, they need that. But brother, when you want to turn the crowd, you want to make folks upset, I mean, anger people, anger them so much that they'd kill an innocent man. You just do the three things, bless God, he did back then right now, and you'll get them riled up. Good old Bible Baptist believing people too. Let's find out what it is. What made the sermon go south? Number one, when the preaching became personal. Notice this in verses 51 and 52, four times you see ye. <laughs> that means you. 51, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so did ye. Uh, verse 52, whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. You know what I found out? People do not get angry when the preacher preaches on politics. People do not get angry when they preach on the um, things going on in the world. You can preach on Ukraine and Russia, and everybody's on your side. You can preach on the border crisis, everybody's on your side. How CNN is fake news, everybody amen you. All about the sodomites and the transgender and the deep state and the conspiracies and the cover-ups. And, and you know why they like that? That's what gets the hits on YouTube. And everybody will shout you down and praise the Lord. But then you start preaching on some sin, brother, and you get the reaction like I'm getting right now. Because the preaching becomes personal. And listen, listen. This is what the problem was with Stephen. Stephen was no longer speaking about others' sins. He was preaching on their sin. And he made a personal application. It was none of this general preaching. Listen to me this morning, in case some of you don't know this. I'm not preaching to the church up the road. I'm not concerned about those that are not here. I'm preaching to you this morning. Now, I'm preaching to you, and you say, well, you ought to say we. No, I'm not saying we. I'm preaching to you. I've already preached this to me before I ever got here. I'm preaching to you. Well, I'll have you know. No, I'll have you know, brother. I said, I'll have you know. Everybody all right? There are some times when that preaching, listen, every time you hear a sermon, you ought to take the preaching personal. I get sick and tired of you sitting out there, some of you, and I get to go preaching here, and you're thinking about, I wish your so-and-so was here, and I wish my son could have heard this, and I wish my daughter would have been here, and I tell you what, my mom and daddy sure needed this, and my husband, he needed this. No, maybe you need it. And that's what gets people so stirred up. That's why you can't hardly find preachers, that, and I know some, I know some, they're still out there, but they're just scattered. You know why? Because you cannot keep a decent crowd in most places preaching like I'm preaching. But I'll tell you how you can get a decent crowd, Brother Mark. Preach against the sodomites. We ain't even got none in here. I don't think so. Hope not. Pre preach, preach against the White House. Preach against, preach about this border crisis. Preach about all this transgender stuff and all going on in the, in the schools. Yes, it's all wicked. But you want me to preach on that, bless God, because you're not involved and you're not guilty. Well, let's preach on your sin. It's amazing to me how people want to amen when you're preaching on somebody else's sin. And get a preacher and go with it. And that's right. What about when I get on yours? Just move along now. Just move along. You and I went to meddling. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to do it every Sunday because you need balance. And you don't need the same kind of stuff every Sunday. But as long as I'm alive 
And as long as I'm the pastor of this church, every once in a while on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to bust bark. And here goes my classic Dennis Knowles say saying, so some of you can mock it, make fun of it, but I'll say it anyway. You can lock it, lump it, or jump it. It makes no difference to me. I went too far, too long on this road, and I really don't care what preacher ain't got the guts to stay on it, bless God. I'm staying on it. And I don't care how the crowd uh, 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 settles down and diminishes and gets out. Brother, we're still doing it straight and right here. Amen. I don't care if we have to stack so many chairs up out of here because they're no longer in use. They get mold on them. It don't matter to me. I am not going the way of this world with God's help. Amen. There's going to be one place around where you don't have some kind of Spineless. And I will not be manipulated. And I will not be threatened. And if you don't like this kind of preaching or it's too hard for you or too personal, I love you. But what you're looking for is everywhere. And that ain't going to do a thing for you but find you in trouble at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. In trouble with God. People, they get mad. You know, you raise your voice. You point your finger. <laughs> you know, I was trained by the Southern Baptists. And some of the stuff I keep, I keep my coat Button pretty good, and they would be upset with me now because my tie stays crooked, and that's just sort of like my trademark. So I'm not going to fool with that. <laughs> and and uh, so they said you're never supposed to back up, and when you use your hands, you got to use them in a positive way, and absolutely under no circumstances are you to point because that's offensive, and they take that wrong. I wonder how John the Baptist would have done in seminary. <laughs> John, you're supposed to be wear, wear, wearing a suit and tie, buddy. This, 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 this camel's hair stuff and this leather girdle. <laughs> Repeat! Oh, you can't say that in here. That might upset somebody. Run off the big offering givers. You know, we're already in financial crisis here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We have less people and less money and whatever. What are you going to do, Brother Dennis? What is your vision and plan for this church? Preach! Amen. That's what I'm going to do. Just like I've always done, bless God. Hallelujah, glory to God. I feel good where nobody does. <laughs> some of you are laughing and smiling. And some of you look like you lost your best friend. Number two. I'll tell you what made this sermon so horrible. Just a strike against my palate. When the preaching pricked their hearts, verse number 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. That's what Bible preaching, listen, everybody listen to me. That's what Bible preaching is supposed to do. You're not supposed to come in here and then leave feeling good about yourself when you live like the devil all week. And don't kick the messenger because you've got the problem. I, I don't know what day and time we live in where a fella goes to church and a, another fella preaches hard at him and he gets mad at the fella for preaching hard at him and everything he said was right about you. It ain't his fault. You get right with God. Maybe it's because I don't get to go to church much and listen to somebody else preach because I'm usually doing it. But you don't know how much I look forward to going to other churches or how much I look forward to having somebody come in and fill the pulpit for me and me sit down and get preached to because I need it. 
and there's many, t- many times I wind up in a place and a fellow says something and the Lord says, you hear what he said? Yes, sir, that's to you. Yes, sir. I don't get mad. So I have, you know, I've been preaching longer than you've been alive. You young buck, you come up here and you tell me them, and jump on the fellow. I go to the altar. My problem's not with that preacher. My problem's with the word of God. They're gnashing their teeth and they're stopping their ears. We may not have nobody in here gnashing your teeth right now. Maybe you will be. And you may not be physically taking your hands and stopping your ears like they were like, no, 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 we don't want to hear no more of this. Heretic. But some of you stop your ears by drifting off to Never Never Land. You just saying, I can't believe I wasted my Sunday coming in here listening to this. When he's finished, I'm out of here. When, when I'm finished today, you'll be out of here. But let me tell you what won't be. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit. Listen, instead of responding in humility, and, and listen, at least, at least entertaining the idea that they might be guilty. That's what bothers me, Brother Mark. People, people nowadays, I mean, it's like, okay, all right, if you didn't like what I preached, would you at least, would you at least calm down for a minute, not worry about the delivery, and not worry, I didn't like your attitude, and I didn't like this, I didn't like that. Okay, all right, what did I say? What did I say? What did the Bible say about it? Are you guilty or not? Just, just think about it a little bit instead of blowing up like a bullfrog. Are you guilty or not? If you're guilty, that's between you and the Lord. And whatever so-called spirit of the way that preacher delivered that message is between him and the Lord. And it's amazing how people get upset when you just give them Bible preaching. But they become angry, upset, just like these folks did. People harden their hearts. And you know what people do? They respond with pride. And they respond with defiance rather than humility and submission. When you sit in a service like this and you hear a man preach like this, how do you respond? Is the first thing you say is like, okay, all right, whatever the, whatever the fellow's preaching on this morning. Okay, Lord, okay, all right. Let me just stop and think here. Let me look at the scriptures he's shown me. Is there something here today wrong with me? Not my wife, not my husband, not any other church member, not the preacher, not the teacher. Not, no. Lord, is there something wrong? wrong with me is what that preacher said right then you know the only one then that you should be angry with is yourself but many times nowadays brother Matt the only one they're not angry with is themselves you see you see human nature ain't changed any in 2,000 years there's churches all over this land that have flocked to teach him. Even if it's not good teaching, they like it. They like a fellow to get up there in skinny jeans and sit on a stool, drink his coffee and say, let's exposit the word of God. Sound like some kind of girl. <laughs> they like that. Let's learn some deep theology. Even these Bible believers, Bible, tr- true Bible believers, let's, lead, let's learn some deep theology. Let's, let's study some kind of crazy thing we've never heard before. Let's talk about the history of the church and how what God's done down through the ages with the church and where we are right now and our Baptist roots and our Baptist heritage. Let's talk about how we were the underdog and God's got us through here. And let's talk about all those bad sinners out yonder and what they do. How these transgender, sodomite, fake newsers. 
No. Maybe the Lord says, no, I don't want to talk about none of that today. I want to talk about you. The, the preaching is going to be personal. It's to you. The preaching is going to, is meant, listen, is meant to prick your heart. Not somebody else's. And then number three, and finally, the sermon went south. When it was personal, when it pricked their hearts. And when the preacher, through his preaching, pointed out their sin. Again, I commented on that a while ago, but notice what he did here in verse number 51. He said, ye stiff neck and uncircumcised of heart. It amazes me when people talk about, well, I don't think preachers ought to talk this way. And they ought to be nice and they ought to be sweet. <laughs> Have you ever looked how uh, Jesus preached? You ever looked at how some of the prophets preached? Notice what he says here. <clears throat> he says... You are stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and in ears. You are a resistor of the Holy Ghost. You're doing the same thing your fathers did. <coughs> Excuse me. Which of the prophets have, you, have your fathers not persecuted? He said, they've slain them which show before the coming. Notice what he said. Whom you have been now the betrayer. He called them betrayers and he called them murderers. And when he called them betrayers and murderers, and made the sermon personal toward them, they lost their ever-loving mind. When the, listen, when the finger pointed at them and said, You stop fornicating. You stop lying. You stop drinking. You stop cussing. You stop laying out of church. You stop gossiping. You stop backbiting. That's when they went crazy. They were cut to the heart, and it says they gnashed on him with their teeth. And they ran on him. Now, I'm going to tell you where we're at nowadays, folks. This is a sensitive society. And what kills me, Brother Dan, is how sensitive men are. How sensitive men are. How men get so offended and upset about stuff. I can't for the life of me understand that. How a grown man can get so offended and upset about plain, straight, forward preaching. But they do. They do. And that's just where we are. Now, as we get ready to transition into the conclusion... And I know some of you saying, thank God. <clears throat> I want to remind you again, this is just a good example of how people today react to preaching. It really is. Stephen, listen to me. You need to consider this. Please listen to me. Stephen had the right message, okay? He was filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gave him that message. So number one, Stephen had the right message. Number two, Stephen had the right motive. In other words, his spirit was right. And you say, well, I don't know. He's calling them stiff neck murderers or whatever. I'm going to tell you how you know his spirit's right. What's the very last verse in that chapter? His spirit was right because they're knocking his brains out and killing them for telling the truth. And he's asking God to have mercy on them. Like I do for many of you. He had the right message. And he had the right motive. And it was preached at the right moment. But he got the wrong reaction. So let me ask you this morning as we begin to close. How do you respond to preaching that gets personal? How do you respond to preaching that points out your sins? How do you respond to preaching that pricks your heart? Do you bow up 
Or do you bow down? Do you resist? Or do you repent? Do you close your ears? Or do you call on God? However you you react, I, I just want you to remember this. The truth will still be the truth whether you like it or not. You will still be held accountable for that truth whether you adhere to it or not. So finally I'll answer this question. Preacher, what can make a good sermon go south? Well, I've answered that question. So let's answer this question. Who can make a good sermon go south? You and I can. I don't know what kind of invitation you give to this. But if God's spoken to somebody here today, I want you to move. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. And even now, if God's speaking to you, come on.